Hey guys, happy um, Friday. Hi guys, happy Friday. I don't know if it, if it caught up or whatever before. Or I don't know what it's doing. So, oh, it's recording. Happy Friday, everybody. <laughs> so, um, we are going to go into Gehenna, which is behind me. So it's lovely being in Gehenna right now. It's a beautiful time. <laughs> I wish, I really wish I could be in Gehenna. So we're actually finding out um, Lucifer's origin. And yeah, it's it's so interesting. I mean, this is beautiful information. And I mean, I just find it inspiring me to, yes, I'm writing another book. And it's going to be a couple of years before that book is done because I just, it's got to be the best, the best of the best of the best before I, yeah. And I'm not on, you know, Kratom like I was. So I can't speed through literally um, the book and, you know, make it and create it. And, you know, my pro pro creative process is kind of, just, yeah, it's very different. Oh, guys, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, you guys, I'm very sorry. Okay. So we're finding out a lot about Lucifer. I mean, a lot. Anyways, so, all right, where we left off with this uh, Ezekiel, actually. So, yeah, this is all in the Bible, yes. Everybody interested in it, it is, so. All right, so, about how he was eating the Eden, the garden of God, we left off there. Now, all the gold beautifully wrought for you, mined for you, prepared in the day that you were created. So, we're finding out a little bit about when Lucifer was created. Now, I created you as a cherub with outstretched shielding wings, and you resided in God's holy mountain and walked among the stones of fire. So you were blameless in your ways from the day you were created until wrongdoing was found in you. Uh, by your far-flung commerce. Commerce is another source of its, its, its relations. You were filled with lawlessness and you sinned. So I have struck you down from the mountain of God and I have destroyed you, O shielding cherub, from among the stones of fire. What stones, what stones of fire are in heaven? Is there really stones of fire in heaven? I mean, my goodness, that's crazy. So who, this doesn't really sound like God, literally taking Lucifer, you know, and throwing him to the bottom. It sounds like somebody else. It sounds like somebody else that was, you know, in a line of direct command from God. All right, now, what did I write here? Oh, here, um, a great uh, anti-hero's dazzling radiance is emphasized. He is hung above about with the world's greatest riches, uh, resplendent the most, um, fabulous jewels and gold, but he transgressed through his far-flung commerce, apparently suggesting an unpopular um, trading deal, which is a little odd, but meaning social relations or even sexual intercourse and lost it all. So that's different. That's very different. Who, who threw loose for out of the kingdom? Was he really there? Did, did, I mean, this is insane. No, worse than bankruptcy by far. However, was the fact that he had been struck down from among the stones of fire, brought to the lowest state imaginable, apparently both materially and spiritually. Superficially, the story, this story seems to reinforce that of the fallen angel in Genesis, stressing the terrible dynamics of the Lucifer Luciferian exile. Once again, though, there are other interpretations. There are so many interpretations, ridiculous. Now, it has been argued that this passage actually refers to the proud king, oh my goodness, Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar, who uh, suffered a dramatic fall from grace, but the association with Lucifer persists, although not always in the context of evil. So it's not always in the context of evil. There's very little of uh, Lucifer being evil in the Bible, it's the devil or Satan, quote, quote. Now the morning star God, the Canaanites Shahur, is still commemorated in the Jewish Shaharit or morning service. 
Now, still to this day, you guys. Now, his twin brother, the evening star, Shalem, announces the daily death of the sun and utters the word of peace, Shalom. Yeah, we're getting there. We're getting places. The twin gods were openly worshipped in the house of Shalem or in Jerusalem. Their female parent was the great mother goddess Asura, Asura or Hillel, the pit from which we all come from, the cauldron of rebirth. Isn't that interesting? I mean, that's really interesting compared to what the Bible actually, I mean, this is what the Bible says. So now the Canaanites believed that Shahur sought to usurp the glorious sun god, but it was also, but was defeated and cast down from heaven as a lightning bolt. Now a seventh century pagan uh, derg to the fallen one reads, how hast thou fallen from heaven? Hillel's son, Shahur, thou didst say in thy heart, I will ascend to heaven above the um, circumpole stars. I will raise my throne and I will dwell on the Mount of Council in the back of the north. I will mount on the back of a cloud. I will be like unto Elion. I mean, come on, all these, you know, different faiths and religions that have this exact same, same statement, how art thou fallen from heaven? I mean, it just, it's not coincidence. There's no coincidence about that. Now, the prototype for the story of Lucifer's fall, uh, this is good, originated in Persian myth of Ariam, the great serpent, our lord of darkness, who challenged his rival, the sun god. Ahura Mazda, the heavenly father. Now, Ahura was once a feminine name. As uh, Jean Markel notes, Ahura Mazda was originally a luminous being who materialized in the form of a female goddess. That, that's beautiful. Is that not beautiful? I mean, come on. There is no Lucifer. I mean, there is a Lucifer. There's no Satan. There's no devil. This is just proving that he's not real. The Bible is completely... Just a really, really fantastical story, but very depressing. Trust me, it's very depressing. Now, being cast out of heaven, Araman tempted the first man and woman in his guise as the serpent, and prophets declared he would be uh, defeated forever at the very end of the world, at the end of times. So we have that. How interesting. How interesting is that? So... What do you guys think? I mean, this is some incredible information about Lucifer. He's not evil. There's nothing evil about Lucifer. It's the Christians. It's, it's, it's the Bible. It's the way that it was interpreted 450 million thousand times. Yeah, that's a lot of times. So, all right. Let's do some coffee time and see what's going on. I just think it's incredible. I mean, all of that was wow. Just a wow. So I think that, yeah, once, I mean, we've kind of, you know, touched on little biblical myths and, you know, uh, creation and Genesis and all of that. So we will actually you know, be going into more of the Lucifer um, being, you know, interpreting him and, you know, interpreting the mythology around him. And, you know, we have archaeologists that have contributed to that book. And it's just really, 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 really interesting. I love it. All right, let's see. Let's see, Jay Phoenix, I am phenomenal. I want an autographed copy when it comes out. Oh, my book. Yeah, it's going to be a couple years, a couple years. So it's going to be a while. Jay Phoenix, thank you for doing this video. Also, that Bible verse used as a reference for Lucifer today was also a reference to Venus in astrotheology. Venus is the bright star in the morning and evening until the sun comes out. Yeah, Lucifer is title as well. They're in context. We're saying that king would fall, but no evangelical had to de demonize these deities. Yes, of course they did. Lucifer was the Latin name of Venus deity because they, yes, they only have the real deity, one true deity. Christians do not even know their own text. I know they don't. So, you know, it's, it's, it's whatever, you know, the morning star and the evening star. And then we have the twin brothers and, you know, uh, uh, Shara and Shaher in Jewish, you know, mysticism and religion. So the Jewish mysticism and religion would come before any of, you know, the morning star and all of that, you know, with Lucifer or quote, quote, Satan or quote, quote, the devil. So it's really interesting. Um, okay, so soul thorns. Yes, I knew you were going to make another. 
honestly, you're that good. I'm not that good. Oh, the book. I'm not that great. I'm not. But this is going to be a really good one because I'm taking my time. So, Abby the Witch. Oh, congratulations. Oh, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I love it. I love it, I love it, I love it. All right. Talon, I am doing well and hope you are too. I'm good. I, I was overwhelmed for some odd reason. Um, a, a little sad about having to release my fox that I have been taken care of for the last six months, not gonna lie. Oh, I know Ruby deserves to live in his natural environment because I may, I became very attached to him. Aw, oh my God, a fox, that would be beautiful. How long have you been writing books? Oh my God, since like 2018, 2017, 2018? What, what particular aspects of witchcraft is this one going to focus on? My path my path, my experience, it's going to be traditional witchcraft purely, purely, or have you given it that much thought? Yeah, oh yeah, it's, it's, it's completed in my head, but I just have to get it on paper. Um, I just started a witch's ladder using um, predatory bird parts. Ooh, feathers and claws, I love it. That and carving out a new ceremonial pipe from a piece of deer antler have become my newest witchy project, blessed be. I love that, ooh. That is really interesting. I love that. I love the idea of pipe out of a out of a deer antler. That's beautiful. But yeah, it's gonna be all traditional witchcraft, but it's gonna have my folklore and you know folklore from my region in it. So it's gonna have stuff that I have never published before. Thank the gods. All right, Talon. This sounds ex remarkably like um, Anil versus Anki of Sumerian mythology. So we are actually yeah. This is you know based on you know Persian and Sumerian and uh, Babylonian mythology, but that would make sense considering the Enuma Elish is much older, is a much older form of Genesis of the Bible. True, very true. All right, Lady Blind Wolf, heart, 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 I love you. Uh, Michael, 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 is that how I say it? Hail the Lightbringer, exactly. Gustavo, great, thank you. All right, uh, Michael, I think I'm saying your name right. You look so calm. I fucking love you, dude. Sorry for the language. You're fine. I, that's how I, that's my daily vocabulary. All right, Michael, damn, the sound died. Yeah, I don't know what was wrong with that video, but yeah. That was just what I wanted. Zozo's not real. That is what I wanted. So I, that's what I got. I asked and you, if you ask and you shall receive. You do. Okay. Michael, nature at its finest. Oh, the fairy folk, yes. All those toadstools. I was like, wow, Michael. All right, you are amazing. I love the video. Thank you. Oh, you found it. Good. Oh, I'm glad. Easy to follow and you are so calm and I just love the energy you are sending. I need to see your Zozo video you are talking about. I know it's probably a no-go topic, but it is still interesting for me and I want to know who, who that entity is because he, her, them, that is always messing with people's Ouija sessions. So I will come to there one day. Oh, this was fake. It's, I mean, it's sadly fake. But thank you a lot. A beautiful video, and we'll support you fully. And I hope you soon get back on the board. Oh, I'll be getting back on the board too. Michael, heart, 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 heart. Thank you. Heart, 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 heart. Back. I love the black hearts. Yeah. Um. Definitely, 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 definitely. Um. So that was just a, a thought form, um, created by a very, very negative man, and that was all I will say. <laughs> Not a good, not a good thing to go into. I'm way past that, so yes. I'm glad you found how I use the Ouija board. Um, I have many updates on it too, so you just keep going through the videos, you'll find them. Talon, a boy who kept bad company. Wait a second, what have I done now? <laughs> Rodrigo Gordon, love your collection of Ouija boards. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Kali Fox Club, wait, is that in the Bible? Yes, yes, it's all in the Bible, sadly just misinterpretation or interpretations different interpretations so jay phoenix all right lady blind wolf katana 89 matrix duality creator hi hi guys ashley lynn love the background thank you all right alexander hill metal magic and mayhem hello abby the witch uh careless hi guys i love you all i miss you guys all right well, that's it for today, guys. So uh, what do you guys think about this? You know, um, it sounds like, you know, Lucifer was created as a cherub and it sounds like Ezekiel cast him out instead of God. So I, I there's no, you know, I'm a reason 
you can't really pinpoint and you know directly it's just difficult that's all i have to say so all right um i hope you guys have a great weekend please be safe stay healthy be careful all that good stuff i love you guys with all of my heart i'm disappearing into gehenna all the way from venus of course all the way back down there we go now i'm not disappearing into gehenna but i love you all and everybody please have a safe and good weekend. I love you guys.